So when we look at history, I love looking at amazing women in history. I have loved doing that through the scriptures, but there was a time where I said, God, I, I want to know more women throughout the centuries that changed the course of history. So every now and then I'm going to bring this segment where I will talk about different women that impacted history. And the one I want to go to today is, the, is Catherine von Bora, who was the wife of Martin Luther, lived in the 16th century, was born 1499, and she died 1552. But she's a very interesting woman in history. You don't hear too much about her. You, you always hear about Martin Luther, but you don't hear about Catherine. And Catherine was an amazing woman. She was a nun. And Martin Luther was a monk. <clears throat> and so when Martin Luther nailed the edict to the, to, to the church doors in Germany, um, everything began to shift throughout Europe. Their marriage in 1525 created a storm of criticism in, ecclesi in ecclesiastical circles all over Europe because Catherine was a nun. They, she was 26 years old and she married a 42, you know, the 42-year-old Martin Luther. But she in some ways pursued him because Luther's attack on the ecclesi ecclesiastical authority reverberated in the monasteries and the convents, both, uh, and both monks and nuns begin to seek freedom in the years of 1520, and they begin to flood out of these, uh, out of, you know, religion in the, in the Catholicism because they'd heard, you know, the freedom wherewith Christ had set them free. So now Martin Luther has a problem on his hands. He has all these nuns leaving the, their monasteries, and he's got to find how he, he took it so personal because he initiated it that he felt the need to find them husbands. Because remember, you're talking about 1552, you know, uh, the 1400s and 1500s. And these, you know, for a woman to be in society and have a husband was no small thing. It took, it took work. So now he's got nuns coming out of the monasteries. Anyway, the, the story is, is that. Um, that uh, Catherine decided to leave the monastery. Her aunt was the overseer of the monastery, and seven other nuns planned to escape with them. So they were smuggled out of the convent in barrels by a merchant that did business with them on the night before Easter. And he got them in. The, they got in these barrels, and he rode for 20 miles. And they stopped the next day. They they had church. They visited a church and everything. And then they they finished the next 20 miles, and he dropped them off at Martin Luther's home. And Martin Luther had uh, converted um, a, a monastery, and that he made into his home. And so he began to find husbands for these for these nuns. He found every one of them a husband except for Catherine. He sent one man, and Catherine said no. No, she didn't think so. He just was too religious, um, too stiff. You know, I, I love this woman. And so he sent another man. And um, she said, okay, I will agree to either marry him or Luther. In other words, she was saying, I can, you know, have you considered, have you considered marrying me? Because I would like to marry you. Well, Martin Luther was so taken back by, by it because, remember, he thought he was going to die a martyr's death, you know. He he thought he was gonna he was gonna be burned at the stake, you know, in fire because of because of the 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 uh, the Protestant movement that began to shift Catholicism and everything else. So he didn't think he was gonna last long. So he thought like, let's get married. So they married. They had a beautiful marriage. They loved each other. They were married 21 years. They had several several children together. Martin Luther left everything to to Catherine because he said she's a loving mother. She'll make sure all the kids get you know, everything divided up properly. Luther. Uh, so when they when they married, um, it was funny because a few months after their marriage, he made the announcement and he published it. And he said there is about to be born a child of a monk and a nun. I mean, you guys, this was scandalous. This was cutting edge. This was this had never been done before. This was a bigger picture. In other words, they left the framework of what life was in that period, and they broadened the, the lens and made a, made a whole new movement, a whole new life for so many, and everything began to shift. So one of the things I loved about Catherine, this is why I want to tell this story, is because I believe she was prophetic. And, I, and she did a prophetic gesture at one time that they write about that I loved. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you that story. Luther was generally a cheerful man, but he had bouts with, they said, moodiness, melancholy. Let's just call it what it was. I think he battled depression. 
you know, and I, I can understand that in ministry, it is, it, you know, it, it's, it's high power. I mean, and rem remember, he's riding horses and, you know, the trips were more grueling and he's, he's, he's in the crosshairs because he had nailed that edict up on the doors. So everything's changing. So this man was going through a lot. Catherine understood that. Remember, I just did it. You just saw me do it. That's what I do. I step back and go, I, I don't think, this man's, de he's, he's depressed. Who wants to be around him? He's just depressed. No, you step back and you look around him and you see what, where he's come from. You see what happened in his life. Well, as the good wife that she was, she realized, you know, that he was struggling and she would always try to cheer him up, you know, and bring comfort and encouragement to him. But he would get into such bouts with it that he would sometimes leave home until he could get a handle on it. So once, when, when nothing seemed to help, he left home only to return still grieved. He was, it was like in a grief. And on entering the house, this is what I love, he found his wife seated in the middle of the room, dressed in black, with a black cloth thrown over her head and looking quite sad. A white handkerchief she held in, 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 in her hand, and it was damp, as if moistened, as if moistened with tears. When Luther urged his wife to tell him what was the matter, she replied, Only think, my dear doctor, the Lord in heaven is dead, and this is the cause of my grief. There was a moment of silence, and Martin Luther burst out laughing. He laughed, and, it, and he said, It is true, dear Kate. I am acting as if there was no God in heaven. She broke him out of that melancholiness. She broke him out of that depression. And Luther, um, it, it, it says it, in the writings, his, the melancholy was broken off of him. You know, she saw the bigger picture of some of the things she knew. She knew she needed to lighten him up, lighten him up, you know. So she does this prophetic act, and she knows he's coming home, and he's coming in the door. So she does this whole prophetic act that totally breaks through and transforms him. You know, Catherine became the 16th century example of a Proverbs 31 woman. Remember, it was a pro it, the Protestant protesters. They protested, you know, the way things were done and began a whole movement. So she was representing the new spirit of Reformation and played no small role in transferring the ideal of a Christian service from the cloister to the home. And when she brought it, it when she did that, it changed everything. It was a game changer. I want to say this. She also was interesting because she was a horticult uh, horticulturist. She was... Um, she was very educated on herbs and poultresses and how to dress wounds. And she had a hospital in her home. One of her sons became a doctor. He said, my mother's a better doctor than I am. This woman, she brought, she was a real estate tycoon. You know, she bought real estate and worked real estate, selling it and, and, and trading it. She made a lot of money in the background for Martin Luther. I love this woman. She saw the bigger picture. Listen, for a nun to leave the cloister and to and to and knowing she could be burned at the stake for it and to and to pioneer something, she saw the bigger picture. Now, after everything I've shared today, I want to I want to I want to end this this first broadcast, very first broadcast of the bigger picture in prayer. And even as Elijah prayed for his servant for his eyes to be open, even as Paul said that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened, that you might know, if this is something you would like to say, Holy Spirit, teach me how to do that, that I don't just respond and react. I'm going to be speaking in, in, in probably the next show on how to... Um, on how, bells going off. Yes, Lord, we hear you. I want to speak in the next show of how to discern these things and, and how do you get to that next step? You know, how do you, we're living in crazy times. How do you discern that? So uh, I'm a builder. Remember, I'm a builder. So this show is building for the next show and so on and so forth. So uh, let me pray. If you want God, God to open your eyes, then I'm going to pray a prayer right now that I believe is powerful and will reach right through this lens into your home, into your heart. So Heavenly Father, you see the people that are watching. You have captivated them with your anointing. You have stirred their hearts to want more than what they've been walking in. I pray now that you would enlighten the eyes of their understanding that they might know things. They might see things. They might perceive things at new levels that they've never done before. Father, instead of reacting the next time somebody makes them mad or the next time somebody does something that agitates them, I pray, Holy Spirit, you will give them the tap. They will step back in their spirit and they will allow you to show them the bigger picture of what got that person in that place because it probably is not about them. So, Father, touch their hearts, touch their eyes, enlighten, bring life, not only to the outward but the inward. For I prayed in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Thank you for being with me on my first broadcast. There's more to come, so we will keep you posted on the times you can watch. And I just, I just thank you for being part of the bigger picture.